The bases dropped on a Friday here at Soccer Down Here, and after the, the morning kickoff, we'll get into the weekend whip around and all the news you need to know as we head into the weekend. Big news coming uh, out of Major League Soccer since we're in the transfer window. D.C. United already looking to bring folks in and already looking to send folks to new destinations. We'll get into that coming up in just a little bit. Manchester United busy in the transfer window. They're inking folks. I think that's the official term. They're inking folks to contracts. So we'll get into that as well and get you ready for the weekend that will be. But for the uh, the, the morning kickoff this morning, it's uh, kind of a little personal. And uh, you know the, the troubles that I've had for uh, you know, the automobiles and the things on four wheels. We'll get into that in just a little bit. But a reminder, your morning kickoff brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee, Kickoff Coffee CO. KickoffCoffeeCO.com, at KickoffCoffeeCO on the Bird app, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Reminder, use the code SOCCERDOWNHERE15, and you get 15% off your purchases. And thanks to everybody who's been investing in Kickoff Coffee and everything that uh, they're trying to do for the game. And if uh, you use SOCCERDOWNHERE15 to get your 15% off on your discounts for everything Kickoff Coffee uh, brings to the table every morning, or lunch or evening, whenever you want to have your coffee. 10% of those proceeds head toward youth development and the youth development of the game, and we love that they're doing that and reaching out and helping grow the game from the youth level. So that's uh, fantastic stuff. As always, from our friends at Kickoff Coffee, kickoffcoffeeco.com, at kickoffcoffeeco on the Bird app, on the Face Space, and on the IG. Soccer Down Here 15 is your code to get 15% off your purchase with 10% heading toward youth development for every single purchase across the board. So the, the morning kickoff, it has to do with uh, automobiles, again. But, and, and I admit, I firmly admit that these days when it comes to my automobile, I am waiting for the moment when something goes wrong instead of enjoying the fact that there is a newer automobile on the driveway that isn't just uh, dying on the vine every single time you turn the turn the ignition switch but uh, or push the ignition switch as it was in the last case but uh, yeah we've hit six months of owning the the newer car and we finally have our first incident and this is outside of regular maintenance and everything and so uh, yesterday the boss was having a uh, the boss was having a party here at uh, here at uh, the headquarters and it was to catch up with some very very dear friends who uh, are are big soccer fans and love to grow the game as well and we hadn't seen them in a very long time they came over we had dinner and so on and so running errands getting everything ready for this particular party on my end I was given uh, shopping duties and you know have you have your list have your locations that you got to go you got to get your bag ice got to get your got to get your your fruit you got to get uh, cupcakes because uh, you know you got to have dessert for a party like something like this and so you know, when you have a car that is the size of, of mine, it's an SUV, a midsize SUV, and, you know, you come walking up, and it's a high axle, and you can kind of see underneath, and you see that uh, there's stuff in, embedded in between the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the grooves in the, the radial tire. And so I'm thinking, okay, it's a rock. You know, you just go, and you take a coin or something, and you sit there, and you take the, the stone out, and you sit there, and everything's fine. Uh, this time it was a screw. And so, of course, after cursing in the parking lot, that uh, six months happened. So you're trying now to make sure that you can run all of your errands today and make sure that nothing is going to happen to the tire in between the time that you have your appointment set so they can look at the screw that's in the tire and hopefully just pull it out, patch it, and you're on your way. But with my luck, it's probably going to end up being another replaced tire at the left rear. But, uh, yeah, so we, we hit six months, and it's like that sign, you know, a uh, number of days before uh, an incident on the premises. Well, it's uh, we've hit uh, just about six months. So 180 days before some, something outside of regular maintenance had to happen to the car. And so uh, we'll keep you posted, see if, uh, see if I have to get a full tire replaced and see how much damage that screw is doing or done, and we will uh, we'll go from there. But, yeah, so... Waiting for things to go wrong instead of enjoying things that are going right. I know that's not the best mindset heading into the weekend, but nevertheless, 
that's uh, where things are right now, considering the luck that I've had with cars over the last uh, year and a half, two years or so. So uh, keep you posted on that. But uh, may, your, may you and your car and your tires have a, a better start to the weekend than I have had. And uh, just everybody get to their location safely and, and enjoy everything uh, about your, your four-wheeled friends that can get you from point A to point B. That's your morning kickoff. Brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee. Kickoffcoffeeco.com on the web, at Kickoff Coffee on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. And uh, once again, use the code soccer down here 15 to get 15% off of your uh, investment in Kickoff Coffee, and they will in turn take 10% of the proceeds and invest it in youth development. So very, very cool stuff across the board involving our friends at Kickoff Coffee. Kickoff Coffee CO, kickoffcoffeeco.com, proud sponsors of everything SDH. All right, let's get into the news and uh, what we're looking at here. A couple of uh, things before we get into the weekend whip around patent pending trademark uh, right around the corner. DC United is uh, looking at ex Derby County midfielder Ravel Morrison for a, a DP deal. It looks like uh, those conversations are getting r- really uh, ramped up quickly, according to Stephen Goff of the Washington Post. Uh, Morrison, 29 years old, recently played under Rooney at Derby County, which makes sense in, in reaching out. Uh, Goff notes that he'd receive a a uh, a DP contract, filling one of the two slots that they have open, along with Taxi Funtas. Uh, Morrison would be a, a part of the central midfield that would include Chris Durkin, Russell Canals, and Moses Nyman. In uh, 21-22 with Darby County, 36 matches, four goals, four assists, and 25 starts. He is a, a, a Jamaican international and has spent time uh, with their national team and had about 2,500 minutes in 38 uh, 38 appearances in all comps. Uh, Manchester United's youth system, he's uh, spent time with Atlas, Lazio, Ostersen, Adio Den Haag, Youth International for England, opted for Jamaica at the senior level, twice across 13 caps for the Reggae Boys, and played a central role in CONCACAF's na- uh, nation's uh, unsuccessful qualification for the World Cup. Uh, Rooney was hired on Tuesday, and that's not the only move that has been made. It also looks like Julian Gressel is heading to D.C. United, according to uh, Tommy Scoops, Tom Bogert, deals in exchange for $600,000 in GAM plus possibly another $300,000 in GAM incentives. Stephen Goff was the first to report that news as well. And so, uh, obviously, uh, Wayne Rooney has thoughts in mind as to who he wants to bring in toward this season to try to get what you can out of the, uh, the 22 season to get ready for 23. Jesse Lingard apparently is quote end quote in talks according to Pablo Maurer at the Athletic about coming in and being a part of uh, DC United as well. So uh, interesting that Jesse Lingard is in discussions, and it looks like uh, you got Ravel Morrison in discussions. Looks like he's going to be signed. Julian Gressel on his way out to Vancouver. So uh, very very busy morning so far for DC United. Obviously, we'll keep you posted on that kind of stuff. So uh, Gabriel Slanina, remember, uh, we saw that Slanina was picked up uh, by Chelsea for $10 million but loaned back to Chicago, so he's going to continue to get reps in uh, MLS. Uh, there was a, a notification, there was a, there was a marker in the Julian Carranza deal with uh, Inter-Miami and Philly that if he, he had uh, received, I think it was 15 points total, then it was a trigger for a 500000 in GAM with Miami retaining a future transfer percentage. So Julian Carranza and Philadelphia Union, so far a match made in heaven, seven goals in just over 1,100 minutes. So uh, you've got that working for Philadelphia. And now it looks like uh, Bernadeschi is that close to officially joining Toronto. So you'll have Crescito, Bernadeschi, and Insigne when he is healthy as Toronto continues to turn themselves into Serie A West and looking at it uh, that way. So it's, uh, once again, very, very busy morning with what's going on in Major League Soccer since we are now in the window getting you ready for the weekend. So now it is time for the weekend whip around patent pending and a trademark anticipated. And we've got seven matches on your uh, Saturday and seven more on Sunday. We'll go through juice boxes and we'll let you know what the the uh, 
the uh, fun facts are for each of these matchups. And we'll start with the activity that is on your Saturday. And we'll start with the 730 games and the uh, Canadian Classique, as D- Dylan Butler talked to us about on uh, Wednesday. CF Montreal, Toronto FC. CF Montreal at Stad Saputo, a minus 145. Your draw is a plus 301. Toronto FC is a plus 363. And uh, your fun facts in this one. CF Montreal is unbeaten in the last three Canadian Classiques, recording two wins and a draw against Toronto last season. Montreal has never gone more than three straight MLS matches against Toronto without a loss, with two previous three-match unbeaten runs most recently in 2016, including the playoffs. CF Montreal has lost three of its last five home matches, including a 2-1 defeat to Sporting Kansas City on Saturday. Montreal is one of two teams, along with Toronto, yet to keep a clean sheet at home this season. And Toronto FC's 2-0 loss in uh, Chicago on Wednesday was its 11th defeat of the season, tied for most in Major League Soccer. It's the fourth time the Reds have lost 11 times in their first 20 matches of a season, doing so in 2021, 2018, and 2012. I'm leaning toward uh, CF Montreal in this one at that minus 145. Also at 730, Philadelphia Union and the New England Revolution, Union and Revs. Philadelphia's a minus 112. Your draw's a plus 264. And the Revs are right now a plus 295. And once again, this is courtesy of our friends in the composite at Odds Portal. You can catch this one on ESPN Plus 738 kick in Chester, Pennsylvania. New England's unbeaten in its last five MLS matches against the Union at three wins and two draws, dating back to the 2020 playoffs. The Union had lost only one of their previous 15 MLS matches against New England, 11 wins and three draws, including the MLS's back knockout stage from September of 2015 to the end of 2020's regular season. Union are unbeaten in their last 15 home matches with 10 wins and five draws, while their only defeat in their last 25 home regular season matches coming against the Revs in September of 2021. They've won 16 and drawn eight. The 15-match home unbeaten run is the longest active streak in MLS and the longest in Union history. New England's 10-match unbeaten run with four wins and six draws came to an end losing uh, Saturday 4-2 to NYC. The Revs became the first team in league history to concede three penalties in a game in that match, with all three penalties coming in the first half. And uh, much like the juice boxes, I'm leaning toward Philadelphia here to get full points. 8 o'clock Eastern, Chicago and Seattle. Uh, For those of you that missed the conversation, we have uh, Nico Moreno and Thursdays with Nico and his second cup of coffee on tape. That one was also on the network. You can check back with that one. And uh, find out what he thinks about Seattle coming into this one, having lost three of four. Uh, No alarm bells as of yet for Nico, but catch that conversation on Thursdays with Nico. Uh, Chicago is a plus 114. Your draw is a plus 252. And Seattle is a plus 222. That number has come down considerably since it was part of the uh, initial discussion when that match came on the board at uh, 8.08 Eastern time kick at Soldier Field. Chicago has won only three of its 16 all-time MLS matches against the Sounders, four draws and nine losses. Though one of those wins came in the last meeting between the sides and MLS's back 2020. All three of the Fires wins over the Sounders have come in the last four meetings outside of Seattle, including Orlando, for MLS is back. Chicago have won three of their last four home MLS matches with the one loss following the 2-0 win over Toronto on Wednesday. Clean sheet with Chicago's 11th and its last 17 league matches at Soldier Field. And the Sounders have lost three of their last four with the one win, including the last two in a row. Seattle's now lost nine times this season, having only suffered more defeats in its first 19 matches of a season once in the club's MLS history, 11 and that was back in 2016. I'll take the draw option here to plus 252 with a lean toward Seattle getting the win. Obviously, the injuries with the firepower and with Obed Vargas and Joel Paulo uh, creating problems for, for Brian Schmetzer in uh, some matches recently. But uh, obviously, Chicago looking for more out of Jean Duran, who got the brace within the first 20 minutes last time out for Chicago. And so I think this will be an entertaining one, but I'm, I'm going draw here with these two. Inter-Miami and Charlotte down in Fort Lauderdale at Drive Pink. That one is at 8 o'clock. And your numbers, according to our friends in the composite, Inter-Miami is a plus 120, and uh, your draw is a plus 249, basically a plus 250. Charlotte's a plus 216 in the composite. Looking at your uh, fun facts out of this one down at Drive Pink, 
Charlotte defeated Inter Miami one nil at the bank in the only previous MLS meeting between the sides back on May seven. You got your first Shinya Shimmy from Andre Shinyashiki scoring the game's only goal in the 68th minute in what was his debut for Charlotte. Inter Miami's 2-1 home defeat to Philadelphia on Wednesday ended a six-match unbeaten run at Drive Pink for the Herons, five wins and a draw. The defeat was Miami's third home loss of the season and the first against an Eastern Conference foe. Charlotte FC has won back-to-back matches for the second time in the club's his- short MLS history with wins over Houston and Nashville. First of those two games, the 2-1 win in Houston on July 3rd. Charlotte's first and only road win in Major League Soccer with two draws and seven losses so far. i got to go with Inter-Miami here at a plus 120. Uh, Charlotte has just not really shown anything on the road, even with what happened last time out. So I'll go with Inter-Miami on the road here against Charlotte. This is the weekend whip around. And thanks for hanging out with us here at SDH. Uh, we'll get you to uh, your comments that you had this morning. I know that a lot of you uh, had Julian Gressel on the mind as well. We'll get into that in just a sec. But we're going through our games here on your Saturday. The other 8 o'clock Eastern kick, Minnesota United and D.C. United. So it's uh, United on the pitch. We'll see what happens after it's done. Minnesota United at a minus 141. Your draw is a plus 309, and D.C. United is a plus 337. Yes, I'm leaning toward Minnesota in this particular match, despite what we see from these days from Taxi Funtas. And your fun facts from Allianz Field. The home sides won all four meetings between Minnesota and D.C., with each team recording two home victories. Loons outscored D.C. 5-0 in the two meetings in Minnesota. Minnesota allowed the game-time goal to substitute Johnny Russell in the 1-1 draw to Sporting back on Wednesday. It was the ninth time this season the Loons had allowed a substitute to score a goal against them, which is the most in Major League Soccer. D.C. United got a goal from Ola Kamara in the 92nd minute to get the 2-2 draw against Crew midweek. It was the last match tying goal for the Crew since. Incoming manager Wayne Rooney scored in the 92nd minute to draw Toronto in June of 2019. Leaning Minnesota, going with Minnesota there with a minus 141. 9 o'clock, two kicks on your Saturday. Colorado hosting the L.A. Galaxy. Colorado at a plus 104. And your draws a plus 263. The Galaxy are a plus 241. Fun facts for uh, Colorado and for LAG. This one is coming at you from Commerce City, Colorado, 9 o'clock, 908 kick. Colorado's unbeaten in seven straight against ML- in M- seven straight MLS matches against the Galaxy, five wins and two draws, equaling the longest unbeaten run by either team in the history of the series. LAG had seven straight from July of 97 to March of 99. Rapids overcame a halftime deficit to draw Orlando City 1-1. In Commerce City in the midweek, it was the second consecutive match. Colorado trailed at the half and earned a result, the first time the team had done that in consecutive matches in the same season since August of 2013. Galaxy have lost three of their last four following the 3-2 defeat to San Jose on Wednesday. LA's conceded three goals in all three of those defeats and has led in three goals six times this season. Only San Jose and Vancouver, with seven each, have allowed three or more goals in matches in 2022. Uh, Leaning Colorado on this one. At the plus 104, you don't know uh, health status right now of Chicharito. He was held out in the midweek because of health and safety protocols. Will he be able to return? If he does, uh, how strong will he be? And without Chicharito, the bishop just isn't the same, uh, uh, Dejan Jovalich. So where is your firepower going to be if uh, Chicharito is out and they know to pin down Jovalich? Uh, Douglas Costa on set pieces uh, has been effective. The craziness of Cali Classico. Uh, gave you a goal from Jovalich late to make it 3-2, but it did not get you the draw that you were looking for. And L.A. just cannot afford to fall behind early again. I think that's going to happen, so we'll go with Colorado at the plus 104. Your last match on Saturday is coming at you from uh, Dallas in Toyota Stadium. 908 Eastern, it is uh, FC Dallas and Austin, more Copa Tejas. FC Dallas pretty much even money at a plus 102. Your draw is a plus 265, and Austin is a plus 245. Fun facts from Toyota Stadium. Once again, all these matches are on ESPN+. And as you look at another round of Dallas and Austin, Austin earned their first point against Dallas back on June 25th, coming back from 2-0 down in the final 20 to draw it 2-2. Dallas won all three meetings last season, scored at least twice in each of the four matches. Dallas's winless run extended to six with a 1-0 defeat to New York City on Wednesday. Dallas has just one win in their last nine league games with uh, three draws and five losses after winning six of their previous nine with three draws and six wins. 
Austin FC equaled the longest winning streak in club history at four with the 3-1 win over Houston on Tuesday. And the Verde have a chance to equal the longest winning streak in MLS this season with the Union winning five in a row from March and April. I could see it. I really could. You don't know which Dallas you're getting these days. And Austin at a plus 245, I like that juice box as well. From what we're seeing with Austin, now they're winning games on the road against teams that they're supposed to beat on the road. i got to go with Austin here at a plus 245 at uh, FC Dallas. So that gets you through your first matches uh, on your Saturday. Uh, We talked about Atlanta and Orlando, but the juice box numbers, Atlanta United a minus 120. And your draws a plus 288, and Orlando City's a plus 292. Remember, you get Luis Arujo back from yellow card suspension, and we talked about that with Greg Garza. So we'll see what happens with uh, Atlanta and Orlando trying to capitalize on the win against RSL in the midweek. At uh, 5 o'clock Eastern, it's uh, Hudson River Derby, Red Bulls in New York City. Red Bulls a plus 131, your draws a plus 257, and NYC is a plus 190 right now. That's an interesting set of lines from our juice box friends this one is on big abc as a part of their large sunday of play it's a 508 kick at red bull arena so no super long pregame show or anything like that red bulls have kept clean sheets in their last two meetings with new york city winning both one nil the timbers from 2017 to 2019 are the only team to keep clean sheets in three straight mls meetings with new york city red bulls have won three straight home matches after starting the season winless at their first six at home four draws and two losses. Red Bulls have scored multiple goals in four straight home matches, 11 total. After failing to score more than once in their previous 15 at home, 10 total goals dating back to August. NYC picked up its ninth win in its last 14 matches, four draws, one loss with the 1-0 win in Dallas on Wednesday. 31 points since mid-April, beginning after their elimination from CONCACAF Champions League are the most in MLS at that time. With this being Hudson River Derby, I think this one's going to be a draw. I'll take that 257 as the largest number on the board and run. Hell is Real is at 730. Columbus and FC Cincinnati crew are a minus 123. FC Cincinnati on the draw is a plus 281, and FC Cincinnati to win. North a plus 300 at a 307. Interesting for this rivalry. This one is on FS1, and that one, once again, is at 730. But it's going to have the mega pregame show from Lower.com, so your kickoff is 7.55 on FS1. Columbus has lost only one of the first eight MLS editions of Hell is Real, winning four, drawing three. After a 2-2 draw in August of 2019, the crew have won their last two home matches against Cincinnati, scoring three in each match. The crew's 2-2 draw with D.C. United Wednesday extended their unbeaten run to a season-best seven matches, winning three, drawing four. Columbus hasn't had a longer unbeaten run within a single season since going nine in a row without losing four wins and five draws in April to June 2018. After their 2-2 draw with Vancouver on Wednesday, FC Cincinnati's unbeaten in their last six. Five of those were draws, two longer than the club's previous longest unbeaten streak in Major League Soccer. Cincinnati is the second MLS team this season, along with Philly, to have a six-game unbeaten streak that featured at least five draws. I'm going to go absolute drunken madness draw at a plus 281. I think that Columbus, hopefully Caleb Porter has learned his lesson to uh, start Cucho and Lucas Zellerion for this one. And we've seen what the two of them have been able to do very, very early on in connecting with uh, each other uh, to stir the offense up for Columbus. You're down 2-0. They come on at the half. They score two. You leave with a 2-2 draw. I'm going to go with uh, Drunken Madness. Absolute Drunken Madness draw in Hell is Real. Take the over, and uh, let's take a peek at those numbers really quickly. The over-under at uh, 3.5 is a plus 168. 4.5 is a plus 378. Uh, I'll take the over-under at 3.5 at plus 168. That's probably going to be 2-2-ish, maybe even 3-2-3-3, something like that. I'm thinking a lot of goals get scored in this one for Columbus and crew ending up in a draw. Also in Major League Soccer on Sunday, 8.30 start. This one will be a fun one. Nashville SC and LAFC. Nashville's a favorite at Geotis at a plus 135. Your draw is a plus 254. LAFC is a plus 183. Fun facts from Geotis, and this one is on local TV. 
8.38 kick Eastern time. This will be the first meeting between these two. Nashville's yet to beat a California team, recording two draws against San Jose, losing their lone match with the Galaxy. Nashville ended a club record four-match home winless run with three draws and a loss with the 1-0 one win over the Sounders on Wednesday. Nationals put together consecutive victories just once in their last 33 matches, including playoffs, winning at Columbus and Sporting Kansas City in early April. And while LAFC has been great at home this season, winning 8 of 11, two draws, uh, draws and one loss, including four straight, less dominant on the road. They've just won one of their last four away from home, two of those losses, one draw. Yet to win a match at a Western Conference opponent this season, three losses and a draw. So, what say you here as we continue to roll? I'm going to go draw again. I think that uh, Gareth Bale makes his appearance. I think Hani Mukhtar gets one. I think it'll be an interesting environment. Uh, I think it'll be a draw, probably something in the 2-2 range. The further away it gets from two goals, the more I lean toward LAFC. If Nashville keeps it very, very defensive, close to the vest, Gary Smith gets out of there with a point, it, it's... Uh, ends up being goalless or 1-0, something like that. The lower the score, I lean Nashville. If it's goals early on the board, this one could get away from Nashville and go for Los Angeles. So I'll go draw here with Nashville and L.A. Three more for you. One at nine, two at 9.30, RSL and Sporting Kansas City. RSL, after losing to Atlanta United in the midweek, go home. Minus 125. Your draws a plus 270. And Sporting Kansas City is basically – is uh, plus three and a quarter. They're at plus 326. This one is on ESPN+, Plus, as are all the other matchups here, the two 930s and the 1030s. So a 938 kick from Rio Tinto. RSL has lost only one of its 10 home MLS matches against Sporting since Sporting joined the West in 2015. Six wins, three draws, including playoffs. Sporting won the first meeting between these sides this season, a 1-0 victory in Kansas City on March 26. RSL's winless run, Extended to four matches, two draws, two losses, with the 2-1 defeat in Atlanta midweek. RSL is yet to lose consecutive MLS matches this season. However, following up their first five losses this year with a win twice and a draw three times. Sporting, and this is interesting, Sporting has not been called for offside in any of its last three matches and against Minnesota on Wednesday drew the Loons offside eight times. It's the only match in Major League Soccer this season which one team was not called offside and its opponent committed the offense at least eight times. Don't quite think that's going to happen this time around. I'm going to go with RSL at home at Rio Tinto at the minus 125. 9.30, San Jose hosting Houston Dynamo. San Jose is a plus 102. Houston is a plus 277. And the Dynamo are a plus 231 for this also 9.30 matchup on NBC Sports California and ESPN+. Plus. So it's a 9.38 kick at PayPal Park. San Jose's unbeaten in their last four home matches against Houston, two wins and two draws, dating back to 2017. The four-match run is San Jose's longest home unbeaten run against the Dynamo in MLS play. On Wednesday, San Jose defeated the Galaxy 3-2, which was the club's seventh game this season that had five or more combined goals. No other MLS team has more than five such games in 2022. The Dynamo's defeated Austin on Tuesday was their fourth straight road loss. 14th loss in their last 17 away from home, only winning two and drawing one, dating back to last August. Houston has managed only one clean sheet in that time, but that came in their last visit to California, the 3-0 one at the Galaxy back on May 22nd. I think Houston's turning it around. I don't think they're turning it around that quickly. So I'll go with San Jose right now, basically at even money, going up against the Houston Dynamo. Last match part of Cascadia, Portland hosting Vancouver. Portland, big favorite, minus 156. And your draw is a plus 311. And Vancouver on the road in Cascadia is a plus 384. This one will be on ESPN+. Plus, and Jake Zivin will be calling the match on Fox 12 Plus. 10-38 kick at Providence Park. Whitecaps won their last road match against the Timbers. A 3-2 victory in October 2021. The win was just Vancouver's third away victory in Portland in MLS play. Five draws and eight losses with the Timbers responding to each of the first two defeats with a win in the next Whitecaps trip. Portland extended their unbeaten run to a season-high five with three wins and two draws with the 3-0 win over Seattle on Saturday. Timbers have taken 11 points from their last five games after collecting just 10 from their previous 12. Two wins, four draws, six losses. After starting the season with six straight losses on the road, Vancouver's just lost once in their last four away, two wins and a draw, following the 2-2 draw at Cincinnati on Wednesday. 
match was the eighth time the Whitecaps have conceded multiple goals in a road game this season, which is tied for the most such games by any MLS team tied with San Jose. So in this one, I've – wow. Uh, I think I'll go with uh, Portland here. I think Portland with the big favorite, Vancouver on the road. We'll go with Portland for the win at a minus 156. And that's a look at all 14 matches this weekend in Major League Soccer for your weekend whip around. Patent pending, trademark coming. Let's take a look at all the news that is uh, fit to print. Let's start with your comments first and foremost uh, on the Twitters this morning and what you guys have uh, in your thought patterns. When I know a lot of folks uh, brought up the Julian Gressel deal, and right now uh, you're looking at yeah, Ricky Ricardo brings it up, Gressel to Vancouver. Joe Johnstone mentions the Gressel trade to Vancouver. And, yeah, I mean, right now, and we've seen it with the discussions, and we talked about with Ravel Morrison possibly, probably coming in, Jesse Lingard in discussions coming in. Uh, Wayne Rooney has a certain idea about what he wants to do and a certain kind of player that he wants to bring in. And if it means jettisoning someone like Julian Gressel, he's going to do it. So he's got a plan in mind. It'll be interesting to see what uh, – else is on the mind of Wayne Rooney as he continues to uh, lead the forces there in D.C. through the remainder of this year uh, from the bottom of the table in the East. A note from uh, Abby, the USL Championship 2022 Fans' Choice Mid-Season Awards are out. Go to uslchampionship.com for all of the uh, the mid-season awards. Goalkeeper of the year, or of the half-season, I guess, Evan Newton of El Paso, Kyle Morton of Loose City, Connor Sparrow of the Miami FC, Matt Van Oakle of Birmingham, and Nathan Steinwasher of Detroit City. Defender of the Year, Mitchell Tainer from San Antonio, Johnny Dean from Birmingham, Edgardo Rito from, Ed, uh, from Oakland Roots, Declan Wynn from Detroit City, Matt Mahoney from the Switchbacks. Coach of the Year, Alan Marcina from San Antonio, Danny Cruz from Loose City, Ben Pierman, Memphis 901, Neil Collins in Tampa Bay, and Trevor James from Detroit City. Mid-season Young Player of the Year, Jake LaCava from Tampa, Michigan Galena from Colorado Springs, Joshua Winder from Lou City, Cam Dunbar from Los Dos, Jackson Conway is a part of the discussion for Young Player of the Year at the halfway point of the season. MVP nominees, Haji Berry, Colorado Springs, Oder Magnus Carlson from Oakland Roots, Preston Judd from Los Dos, Leo Fernandez from Tampa Bay Rowdies, Milan Olaski from Orange County. So those are your choices, and you can go to uslchampionship.com and vote on the midseason awards. And the voting closes Wednesday, Wednesday, July 20 at noon. So vote for all of the folks that uh, you feel are worthy right now, the midseason awards, the Fans' Choice midseason awards. Cast your ballot for all of those particular categories, including young player, which is Jackson Conway on there for Atlanta United too. So go to uslchampionship.com, follow the links and vote for the midway midseason awards for the fans' choice here in 2022. So very good stuff. Thank you for the heads up on that, Abby. Uh, also on the transfer world, now it looks like Manchester United have completed the signing of Christian Eriksen on a three-year deal following what Sky says is a rigorous medical uh, Thomas Tuchel said Sterling was uh, uh, Raheem Sterling talking to the Telegraph that Raheem Sterling was his number one forward target. And also on uh, the board looks like Jed Spence has just completed his medical. This is coming from Fabrizio Romano in London. Going to sign the long-term contract with Tottenham as a player. And it got a here we go confirmed. Middlesbrough is going to receive 12.5 million pounds fixed fee plus add-ons. So it'll end up being a bit less than 20 million dollars. Melissa Reddy says that uh, from Sky, everyone's excited about Christian Erickson. Lissandro Martinez should be following suit, and uh, that one we've been talking about a lot, so once again, follow Fabrizio Romano when it comes to Lissandro Martinez possibly making his way to Manchester United. So, uh, quoting old JR at 45 million uh, pounds for Lissandro Martinez from IX Business is picking up. And so this is uh, good stuff from Christian Erickson. It looks like it is a three-year deal looking for any kind of a number that is attached. It does not look like there is a number attached right now with uh, all of the 
the rumors and the papers and everything, but no real number attached to Christian Eriksen as of yet. Uh, Joan Laporta, quiet on Barca's Lewandowski chase by uh, Fabrizio Romano, quoted uh, Laporta. I have nothing to say on Le- on the Lewandowski deal. I'm not going to comment on this negotiation. We have to respect FC Bayern. I really respect Bayern, and Leva is their player. Uh, the Barca- the uh, current Barcelona national nightmare is over. They finally completed the £55 million signing of Leeds winger Rafinha. Uh, Graham Potter says Cucurella is not, Mark Cucurella, not affected by the transfer rumors of a possible move to Manchester City. Ronaldo, uh, once again, according to Melissa Reddy, could see Cristiano Ronaldo could get a, could reject an astronomical offer to join a Saudi Arabian club. It was a nine-figure deal for two years for a particular club in Saudi Arabia. Cristiano Ronaldo could reject that. So it'll be interesting to see if, if uh, he continues to uh, stick with Manchester United or if he wants to go uh, someplace else or who would be interested in picking him up. So we've got uh, that transfer news as well. All going through the papers quickly with uh, all of their work that they're doing this morning. Frankie Jong refusing to bow to the intense pressure exerted on him by Barcelona Chiefs to accept a transfer to Manchester United this summer, according to reports in Spain. Daily Telegraph, Newcastle United's pursuit of their top transfer targets this summer, Alexander Isak and Moussa Diaby, appear to be over after more frustration in their attempts to negotiate a fee as well as problems with the wages. Uh, the Times, uh, Chelsea says Christi- uh, no longer interested in signing Cristiano Ronaldo after talks between Tuchel and Boley. And it looks like Rangers are going to finalize a deal, hopefully in the next 48 hours, to land Malik Tillman from Bayern Munich. Daily Express, Barcelona have apparently drawn up a Frankie de Jong punishment plan if he rejects a Manchester United transfer. It'll be interesting to see what that is. Uh, Daily Express also has Gianluca Scamaccia saying that uh, Paulo De Canio says that Scamaccia could struggle in the Premier League just like Sebastian Aller. And uh, the Guardian has two Portuguese professionals appointed to work with the chairman of UEFA's independent review into the Champions League final have both worked extensively for UEFA, raising further serious concerns about the review's independence. From the Athletic, it appears uh, Everton owner Farhad Mashiri has insisted the club is not for sale as he promised to support Frank Lampard in the summer transfer window, and Brighton are interested in signing Rangers defender Calvin Bassey. Uh, Bassey reportedly left Ajax boss Alfred Schroeder charmed, in quotation marks, according to the Daily Record, following a phone call as his interest in the Rangers defender has ramped up. Reports midweek claimed that both the Eredivisie champs and Brighton were eyeing the Nigerian international. Uh, Ange Postokolu has remained tight-lipped over Celtics' rumored interest in Czech striker Ladislav Almasi after their victory over Banik Ostrava on Wednesday night. So that is just a small sample of what has been going on in the international transfers. Uh, Jessica Berman, the commissioner of the, uh, the NWSL, mentioned that they're looking to expand by two in the next couple of seasons. Uh, Jonathan Tannenwald, if you can check out the Philadelphia Inquirer, has the angle from the Philadelphia side. Could Philadelphia be a player in that discussion? And is one of those teams the return of the Utah Royals? So we'll keep an eye on that as well when it comes to uh, all of the other stuff that uh, has been going on in the world. Reminders uh, across the board when it comes to uh, programming. Greg Garza's weekly conversation, uh, Beyond Gold Mentoring's weekly conversation this week is with Greg Garza. The Freddie Free Kick is up on the network. Later today, we will have a look at the NPSL Southeast Conference. We'll get you ready for the conference final coming up this weekend, and we'll catch up with some of the other coaches in and around the conference and get their view of how their seasons went this season in the NPSL. And coming up tomorrow, we'll have a preview of the USLW National Semifinal with uh, Tormenta's women and Greenville Liberty. It'll be good to catch up with folks on that as well. On the right-hand side of the bracket, one of those two teams will be chasing after a championship in USL League W. Uh, Minnesota Aurora are on the left-hand side. They are the only unbeaten team in the final group right now that is left to this particular point. But thanks to everyone that has been a part of the show today. you got your weekend whip around. you got a little bit of news and notes. And thanks once again to everybody for hanging out with us all season long here at SGH. We'll do it again over the weekend. Keep an eye out for all your notifications. We've got interviews coming up, 1v1s. Keep you posted on what's going on as teams are chasing championships here in the summer. 
Play it safe, everybody. Have a safe weekend, y'all. We will catch up with you on Monday. Much plot, y'all.